Ava Edward and Ruby sit on one table. Along on that same table we can have Alexia Harrison and Chelsea. We've got a really, really, really exciting science lesson happening today. We're going to look today at what effect exercise has on your heart rate. And we're going to be testing our pulse in two ways. Some of you are going to use this oximeter and some of you are going to be finding your pulse by touching it. Then we're going to exercise. You could do some star jumps. Star jumps, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> how many, how many how do I have to do? <laughs> Should I run on the spot? <laughs> 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 and is it still? <laughs> it's still 67. <laughs> what do you think should be happening? His things must be going up, so. His heart rate? Yeah. Oh, it's technically. Oh, there, it's definitely gone up. 136. <laughs> so that worked. That made you work hard there, didn't we, for that 136? Yeah. <laughs> so you're taking your own pulse, aren't you? So you've got your feeling your pulse on your wrist. I noticed that you, Abigail, were using your thumb and Abby's using her two fingers. Do you know what might be a bit of a problem? Your thumb actually has a bit of a pulse in it. So you know when you're putting your thumb there, you're feeling the pulse in your wrist, but also in your thumb. So what might happen? Yeah, wrist has a pulse as well, so your numbers might be fine. Well done, though. So what we need to make sure is that when we're taking our pulse, we use our two fingers like Abby did, OK, not our thumb, and you need to push down there. I actually think that holding it up there can be easy, but it's up to you. It just depends where you feel it. So straight after the second time. Go on, Lily. I'm going to go on. Ten seconds. Come on, you can do it, Lily. Go on. 105. 105. OK, so let's get Kira's resting heart rate. It's changing. Well, why do you think it might be changing? You don't know. I noticed you were moving about a little bit then. Do you think when you're moving about, it's going to affect your heart rate? Yeah, I think so too. So I think maybe it might be a good idea if you sit down, take your resting heart rate so we're all calm. So should we sit down on the bench? Yeah, OK. Come on then. If you're standing up and moving, you're kind of doing a bit of exercise, aren't you? So your heart rate might well start to creep up. So what's the heart rate now, Shannon? Is it a bit more steady? Yeah, 65. 65. Whereas when she was standing up, what was the number? 74. So when she sat down, her heart rate has calmed down, hasn't it, and gone lower. So you need to be sitting down so you're nice and calm. OK? Fantastic. So when they've got all their data, done the experiments, what are you going to do with it? Well, hopefully we're going to take it all back into class and the children are going to analyse that data. They're going to look at whether they've got any unusual results. And we always discuss about whether or not those unusual results need to be tested again. Once we're happy with the data we've collected, we're then going to plot it on graphs so that we can see any patterns and they'll be able to see fluctuations in the heart rate.